Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at finding the critical values of a function. So we have find the critical points of f of x equals x minus the cube root of x. So to find the critical point, we're going to find the first derivative and we're going to find where the first derivative is either equal to zero or if there are any values where the first derivative doesn't exist. So to get this problem started here, we're going to write this as f of x equals x minus x to the one-third power. The reason why we want to write this as x to the one-third is so that we could use power rule when we take the derivative in a moment. One thing worth mentioning though so that we could use this concept of critical points is that the domain of this function is all real numbers. That way if we find any critical values we know that it's going to be in the domain of f of x because we have all real numbers as a possibility for our domain here. So we get this started, uh, we take the first derivative, the derivative of x is 1, and then we're going to use power rule, it's 1 third times x to the negative 2 thirds, we're just bringing down this exponent, multiplying by x, and then subtracting 1 to get negative 2 thirds. So what we could do here is we could rewrite this as 1 minus 1 over 3 times the cube root of x to the second power. And this one is the most, often, uh, the most oftenly forgotten part of finding critical values, is that students won't always look for where the first derivative doesn't exist. So when you look at this here, notice a zero denominator would give us something undefined. So if we look at f prime of zero, that would give us one minus one over, and the cube root of zero squared is zero, which will send a zero to the denominator. And since this expression here is undefined, this tells us that we found one of the critical values. x equals 0 is a critical point. Okay, and this is following directly from the definition of a critical point. So the next part we need to check is we need to look for where is the first derivative equal to 0. So we're going to set this part here the 1 minus 1 over 3 cube root of x squared equal to 0. So what we could do is we could add this term over to both sides. And we'll have 1 equals 1 over 3 times the cube root of x squared. Now there's one move in algebra that when we have one fraction equal to another fraction, we could take the reciprocal of both sides. So now we're going to write this as 1 equals, it will be 1 over 1 equals 3 times the cube root of x squared. And technically we could say that this is over 1. However, dividing by 1 won't have an effect on this numerator value here. So we could just get rid of this right here. So next what we'll do is we'll divide both sides by 3. And we'll have 1 third equals the cube root of x to the second power. So what we'll do next is we're going to raise both sides to the third power. Now notice when we rewrite this up here, we're going to have 1 over 27 on the left hand side and on the right hand side the third power and the cube root are going to cancel. So we have 1 over 27 equals x to the second. We take the square root of both sides. And one thing to point out here, the square root of 27 is equal to radical 9 times radical 3, which is equal to 3 radical 3. Okay, so when we simplify this, we're going to have x equals plus or minus 1 over 3 radical 3. So this radical 27 part will simplify to 3 radical 3. So these are our last two critical values. So we have x equals plus minus 1 over 3 radical 3 are critical values. Okay, now the term critical values and critical points are interchangeable, but if we want to write them all together, the critical points, so we could group them all together. These are our final answers. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on finding the critical points of a function. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.